This conference will now be recorded. Okay, well, welcome everybody. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Jim Sanfilippo. I'm one of the orthopedic fellowship trained spine surgeons at Reconstructive Orthopedics. Um, I'm also the chief of spine at uh, Virtua and the head of the Brain and Spine Institute at Virtua as well. Um, tonight really is a short presentation, um, a general presentation um, on basically, I, I asked the question, do I need to see a spine surgeon? Um, a lot of times we have injuries, we have um, issues with our neck, with our back, um, and we don't know where to turn. Um, so tonight, I sort of want to answer some of the general questions that I get in the office or we get uh, at our scheduling department, um, and then really be able to answer the questions uh, that you folks all have uh, in the audience. Um, so with that, Christina, go to the next slide, please. So where does the confusion come from? Um, I hear all the time that, you know, patients um, just don't know where to turn to find out what they should be doing when it comes to issues with their spine, whether it's their neck or their lower back. And, you know, commonly I hear that, well, I looked on the internet and the internet told me to do X, Y, or Z. Um, everything from, you know, the most recent supplement that's gonna cure back pain to spending thousands of dollars on uh, equipment or new mattresses. Um, the internet has some great information, but it's got a lot of information and not all of it is 100% accurate. The other thing I try to remind people all the time is spine issues are vast and varied, meaning there are many reasons to have back pain. There's many reasons to have neck pain or pain down your arm, pain down your leg. It's not a one size fits all. So with that, there's not a one size fits all option. So the internet could be a great source of confusion. You know, family and friends. Um, I hear it within my own family uh, all the time. Oh, you have to go see this guy, or you have to go see that guy, or, you know, you don't want to see a surgeon because all they want to do is cut you so they're not going to be honest with you. That's, you know, sometimes it's true, sometimes it's not true. And a lot of times, you know, seeking out uh, real information doesn't always come from family and friends. Urgent cares can send you all over the place. Um, I've had urgent care send people to everywhere from rheumatology, endocrinology, um, for a herniated disc that um, really just needed to do some physical therapy. Television and ads, um, every billboard that I drive past, you know, you give, give me an inch and I'll give you your life back. Um, some of them are great, but again, the treatments are so varied because the issues that people experience are so varied as well. And then our own expectations. Um, so one of the things that I tend to manage on a daily basis uh, in the office is patient expectations and my own expectations for the patient. You know, not every patient's gonna respond the same to every treatment. And with that, we have a lot of different treatments that we can utilize. Christina, next one, please. So what are our options as far as who do we see when we have an issue? And we'll get into some of the issues in, in, in a little bit. But really, you know, we have surgeons. You know, seeing a surgeon right off the bat is not always the worst thing. Um, I will tell you, I have no problem with the patient coming to me with a couple of days or a week of some back pain that really hasn't done a lot because then I can only see the patient, I can help to start to diagnose, excuse me, start to diagnose the patient and I can start the proper treatment with the patient, whether that be anti-inflammatories, some activity modification, physical therapy, and then I can help guide that patient through. So seeing a surgeon is not always the worst case scenario, and just because you see a surgeon doesn't mean you're gonna get surgery. You have pain specialists. Pain specialists are excellent um, at diagnostics. They're excellent at guiding uh, patients through, you know, from the beginning stages right up until the point of surgery. Um, just because you see a pain specialist doesn't mean you're going to get an injection. Just because you see a pain specialist doesn't mean you're going to get a narcotic pain medication. You know, all of those things should be used very sparingly right now in, in, in today's world. There are tons of options that uh, pain management specialists have at their fingertips to help diagnose and help to start to treat pain without getting invasive or without going to narcotic usage. Chiropractors, um, and I'll take the next three sort of together, chiropractic, physical therapy, acupuncture. You know, all of these things serve, you know, a purpose. You know, I believe in a continuum of care. Where we start from the most conservative care to the most invasive care. And you go through a process depending on the patient, depending on how they respond. 
Um, so when you talk about chiropractic, it's very low invasive, very low risk for potentially big reward. Same thing for physical therapy, same thing for acupuncture. You know, I get asked all the time, you know, do these things really work? Well, I will tell you in my own practice, I commonly refer patients to all three of those uh, modalities. And I will tell you about 70, 75% of patients, especially patients with low back pain, that's all we need to do. They return back at five, six weeks, and we don't need to go any further. They're feeling better or they're heading in a direction of feeling better. The other thing I always say, and, and uh, any of my patients will tell you, you know, especially with things like acupuncture um, and even physical therapy and chiropractic, there's been versions of these things around for 5,000 years. If something's been around for 5,000 years, it has had to have helped somebody at some point along the way. So these are very valid and you don't need referrals to go to these places. Um, so if you're experiencing symptoms, mild symptoms, these may be places to start out with. You know, the old, uh, you know, rice uh, therapy, you know, rest, ice, compression, elevation. Well, it's tough to compress and elevate your spine, but, you know, resting for a few days, icing your back, using a heating pad on your back, um, anti-inflammatories, uh, Advil, Motrin, Aleve, Tylenol, they can all serve a purpose in trying to eliminate the inflammation and get you better before you even have to see somebody. But again, this depends on the symptoms. And then other, um, depending on how severe the pain, depending on the timing, um, urgent cares, emergency rooms, using your primary or, or alternative holistic providers, whether it be massage therapy or, or something like that, they all serve a purpose in the continuum of care to help diagnose and begin the treatment of care. Again, this all depends on the symptoms. Christina? So where do I choose or how do I choose? Um, basically, it comes down to a few things. Timing. How long have the symptoms been going on for? Number two, pain severity. This is different for everybody. Everybody experiences pain differently. You know, is the pain mild? Meaning, yeah, it's annoying, it's a toothache, but I'm still doing everything I wanna do. Or is the pain so severe that I don't wanna get up and out of bed? Those are two extremes, but they're two very different, um, you know, uh, experiences that will help to dictate where you should go first. And then any neurologic issues, um, pain down an arm or a leg, weakness in an arm or a leg, any loss of balance, loss of fine motor skills in your hands, that could all be a sign of you know, a major neurologic issue that should be treated sooner rather than later. So, so with that, there's a few red flag symptoms. Um, if you're experiencing any loss of bowel or bladder continence, meaning you're wet and didn't know you had to go, or you lose your stool and you didn't know you had to go, that's a major issue. Um, severe pain that's associated with fevers, chills, that's a major issue. If you have, can't move an extremity, meaning you, know, you can't straighten your arm or lift your arm, you can't straighten your leg, lift your leg, if you're tripping over your foot, you know, if these things have just started, you need to be seen immediately and evaluated immediately, go straight to an emergency department, and a spine specialist will be there to evaluate you. Um, with an MRI, CAT scan, x-rays, whatever we need to evaluate you, because that may be a sign or symptom of something much more severe with your spinal cord or with the spinal nerves. See, Christina. So with that, I sort of broke down this talk into, you know, minor symptoms, moderate symptoms, and major symptoms. Um, and what we consider minor symptoms. So if you've had pain for a day, up to a week, it's isolated to just your back or neck. Um, this is the typical, you know, I was outside um, picking up branches with the latest storm, or I was weeding, I was cutting my grass, um, I was helping, you know, move a dresser. Um, and you have back pain or you have neck pain. This doesn't go down the arm or leg. It's not associated with any of those neurologic symptoms that we talked about uh, a minute ago. Um, then you start out with anti-inflammatories. Uh, you know, a leave is an option, that's naproxen. You have all your ibuprofens, which are your Motrins, your Advils. Um, you can rest, activity modification. So if it, if it hurts to bend over, try, try to limit your bending, try to limit any type of lifting. Um, if it hurts every time you go to run and you're a, you're a runner, well, look for a different form of exercise for a few days or a few weeks as these symptoms start to resolve themselves. Um, ice is a great option in the short term, 
But if you're having muscle spasms and things are tight, you may not want to do ice because that'll tighten things up more. You may want to look for a heating pad. Um, I'm a big believer in moist heat. Um, for those of you who have uh, the new uh, heating pads where you throw them in a microwave or something like that, it's already moist heat. If you have an old fashioned plugged in heating pad, um, like, like we have here in our house or, or my mom has in her house, you can take a washcloth, get it damp, wring it out, and put it between your skin and the heating pad can uh, provide that, that moisture that it needs. And no more than 20 minutes for heat or ice. So usually I tell people 20 minutes an hour. So 20 minutes on, 40 minutes off, 20 minutes on, 40 minutes off, if it's helping. If any of this pain, so this neck pain, this low back pain lasts for longer than a week and it's not getting any better, that's where you need to look at calling your primary care doc um, or coming in to see one of our non-operative uh, uh, providers, whether it be our sports medicine or our physical medicine rehabilitation providers, because you may need an x-ray. We may want to up uh, the ante with the medications and talk about a mild muscle relaxer or a prescription strength anti-inflammatory or even a steroid. So that's really how we treat these minor symptoms. Um, depending on how you respond to those treatments or what an x-ray would show, if it, does, if it shows something a little bit more serious, then we talk about referring to a uh, spine specialist. What I consider moderate symptoms. So this is where you have the pain in the back and the neck. You've had no response to that prior treatment. We've just seen our primary care doc. We've gotten it in x-ray. We've gotten the muscle relaxers. We're still not getting better. Well, now it's time to talk about physical therapy or chiropractor or massage therapy, acupuncture, those types of holistic treatments. And again, we can always see a non-operative spine specialist. You know, we can even progress to seeing a uh, interventional pain management specialist and talking about injections at this point. If associated with that back or neck pain, you have pain going down your arm or leg, no weakness at this point. Um, you really need to start with probably your primary or a non-operative spine doc. Um, what we call radicular pain or pinch nerve pain. That's the pain that goes down the arm into the hand. That's the pain that goes down the leg into the foot. Um, that's a sign of nerve compression. And really, we want to get an x-ray early in that process. We want to start um, some of the stronger anti-inflammatories or steroids early in that process. We want to start the physical therapy or the chiropractic or acupuncture early in that process to try to speed up and give the best chance um, to relieve that neural compression or nerve compression and get rid of that pain going down the extremity as quickly as possible. Um, usually with the pain going down the arm or leg, what we call pinched nerve, radicular pain um, in the leg, it's referred to as sciatica sometimes commonly. Um, there is sort of a time element. Uh, with this, meaning the longer that you have those symptoms, the worse the outcome tends to be uh, if you decide or need to have any type of surgical intervention. Now, I don't want to get you worried. That doesn't mean two days of symptoms is worse than one day of symptoms. Normally, we start to see that drop off around six months. But, you know, if you go three months sort of ignoring it, not really putting up with it, then you try a couple of weeks of anti-inflammatories. Then we do a month or two of uh, physical therapy and getting x-rays and MRIs. Before long, you're getting really close to that six-month mark. So if you start to develop those uh, pinched nerve symptoms, you really should start with your primary doc or a, a non-operative spine doc um, at that point in order to start the workup a little sooner. So, now, if you have any of the major symptoms, now these aren't the red flag symptoms that we just talked about, the bowel and bladder incontinence, the inability to walk, the loss of fine motor skills. These are the pains that are unresponsive to treatment um, and pain that now is affecting your activities of daily living. I can't stand uh, to cook. I can't walk across the parking lot um, to come see my doctor or go to the grocery store. I can't brush my teeth without having severe pain. If the nerve down the arm is associated with weakness. Um, I'm dropping things. My foot is slapping when I walk. I'm tripping over my foot when I try to step over a curb. Um, any type of loss of walking balance or fine motor skills in the hands, um, if you've already been worked up, meaning you've talked to your primary at this point, um, now it's time to see the surgeon first. Um, any type of weakness, loss of motor strength, um, you can see atrophy, muscle shrinking, um, where uh, one side is, is smaller than the other. Uh, commonly we see this 
with pinched nerves in the leg, you see it in the calf muscle, or you see it in the thigh muscle where it starts to lose um, muscle girth um, because the nerve is not beating that muscle anymore. We can see it in the shoulder or we can see it in the tricep or bicep in the upper extremity. Um, I've even seen it in the forearm with people before. So if you start to see that the pain is associated with some muscle shrinking weakness, that's time to see the surgeon sooner rather than later. So what we offer that really can help, you know, manage the gamut of these types of symptoms. So whether it's us or whether it's somebody else, you really want to find a multidisciplinary team. You want to be able to work with everybody from a non-operative, non-interventional spine physician. Um, in our practice, we have uh, three of them with um, Dr. Mulpole, Dr. Evering, and Dr. Holmes that are spread out in our different geographies to fellowship trained interventional pain management specialists that can do injections such as epidural injections or uh, facet blocks, trigger point injections, nerve blocks. Um, and we have five of those in our practice, uh, Dr. Gutman, Dr. Hassan, um, Dr. Pottle, Dr. Salim, and Dr. Khanna. And actually we have Dr. Steele who's gonna be joining our practice uh, in August covering our Pittman and Cherry Hill geographies. And then fellowship trained spine surgeons. Um, I get asked all the time, you know, is an orthopedic surgeon, spine surgeon different than a neurosurgeon, spine surgeon? So in our basic training, the answer is yes. But about 25, 30 years ago, we started these things in, in spine surgery called fellowships. Now, they're not um, just restricted to spine surgery. There are fellowships in just about every field of medicine today. Basically, you want your spine surgeon to be fellowship trained, meaning that after they did a general neurosurgery, uh, residency or after they did a general orthopedic residency that they went on to do a year or more of specialized spine training with that they're usually the fellowship they're usually taught by neurosurgeons as well as orthopedic surgeons so you're getting the best of both worlds usually with a fellowship trained spine surgeon um, and that's what I would insist for my patients whether it's me or whether it's another opinion or another surgeon or I'm giving the second opinion you have to go with who you feel you're most comfortable with, who gives you the best opportunity to get better, but also is the best trained. And, and I would insist that any surgeon you go to in orthopedics is fellowship trained uh, as far as for the more specialized fields, such as joint replacement, spine surgery. You want a fellowship trained doctor doing that procedure. Um, our highly trained appointment scheduling. I'll tell you, we've worked closely with our schedulers as well as we have a uh, computerized system that helps to even direct our schedulers to get you to the best place. Meaning, based on the questions that are going to be asked of you at the time of scheduling the appointment, you know, you're not just going to be funneled to the non-operative doctor or funneled to the pain management specialist. Um, you know, you're going to go to what we feel is the best place for you within the practice. So if you call with, you know, pain down the arm and weakness in your hand, you're going to get to see the surgeon. You don't have to start with the non-operative doctor and work your way up through the system like you do in some groups in the area. The other thing, too, that we try to do is be able to offer you an appointment within 24 to 48 hours. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be in the most convenient office. Um, as I said, we have only two spine surgeons. We have eight offices. We have only three non-operative spine docs. We have eight offices. But we will find you an appointment within 24 to 48 hours. You know, if we're able to find you the perfect time at the perfect location, fantastic. If not, we will work with you to get you in as quickly as possible to the right person um, in a timely fashion that works both for you, your symptoms, as well as for the provider. So with that said, I, I've been talking now for about 20 minutes. Um, I know uh, that was a lot of information. I know um, a lot of you have questions. Um, specifically to your own uh, uh, plight, but on top of that, we can help to generalize those for you. Um, please feel free to, to type them in the chat box. Um, but otherwise, thank you for listening to me. I, you know, even I don't like to listen to myself for 20 minutes sometimes, so I do appreciate it. Thank you, Dr. Sanfilippo, for your time. Um, we did have a question that came in right before you started. Um, just you know it was just a question the gentleman had shots in his back about three years ago by dr gutman the relief did not last very long do you think he should try them again to seek some relief 
So I, I will tell you, um, depending on the situation, um, I, I did with this gentleman privately uh, through the um, chat as well. Um, but, you know, it depends on the situation. I had a patient today that um, came in to see me who had pain in their back, pain down their leg, had the same exact issue three years ago, went to physical therapy, and it took care of the issue for three years. I said, great. I said, the X we got x-rays. The x-rays didn't look bad. I said, you know what? Let's start with what worked before. So we started the same anti-inflammatory. We went back to the same physical therapy location. And we're going to give it a chance. Um, so there's a good chance in that situation that, you know, if it worked before, it'll work again. And if it works for three years, fantastic. Um, in this particular case, if the relief did not last that long, um, probably starting with the injections again um, without getting further imaging or without further evaluation or without determining if it truly is the same problem or if it's a different problem, I probably wouldn't recommend. Um, so, you know, my recommendation would be, um, come on in, you know, we can start with Dr. Gutman. That doesn't mean we get an injection. You can start with me. We can start with one of the non-op docs. Um, but let's get an MRI. Um, let's uh, get a new x-ray. Let's get a new physical exam and see what we're dealing with today compared to three years ago. If it truly is the same issue um, and the relief didn't last that long, you know, the next question is going to be, well, it's three years later. Is there something different now? Is it getting worse? Did it, maybe the injection lasted a little longer than we thought, but these are the types of things that we can talk about as we go forward. Um, as far as office locations, I just got a question about where our offices are. Um, so we have offices throughout Southern New Jersey. Um, currently our Bordentown office has not reopened uh, since COVID. It will be reopening in September. Uh, but we have offices currently opened in uh, Morristown, Medford, Voorhees, Sewell, Pittman, Cherry Hill, and Vineland. And then the Bordentown office will be coming back online uh, in September. Thank you. Were there any other questions tonight? If, if, if you feel more comfortable asking the question, you can go ahead and unmute yourself as long as we only have one person speaking at a time. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Um, so, I, doctor, I, I was the one that wrote you the, uh, um, I'm the fellow that had the polio and have the difference in the leg lanes, and I'm getting a new MRI sometime this week. Um, can I send it to you? So, the, the short answer is yes. Uh, Christina, um, if uh, you can help direct that, um, but yes, we are actually uh, set up where we'd be able to have you uh, send us uh, the disc. I can review, okay. especially since uh, you are a former patient uh, with the group, uh, review that and be able to reach out to you to talk about the next steps. You're also welcome to set up an appointment, um, have you come in and we can review that together in person. Okay, it, if if we reviewed it, could I, we review it up? Could we review it online? I'm still a little skeptical about getting out with this COVID <laughs> and being 77, I'm a prime, you know, I'm the guy that Jerem is looking for, so. Absolutely, uh, we, still, we still are offering um, telemed and telehealth visits and we can definitely set that up. Okay, um, so when I, go in, when I go in and get this done, I should just say send it to James San Filippo care yep. of Re restructive orthopedics and they will send us a report now we do have access to some of the local places as far as where we can log on and look at your mri okay um, those include large mind imaging south jersey radiology um virtua health inspira health uh, jefferson health of new jersey um ami imaging i believe those are all of them but if you have it done at one of those locations um, then I can log in and look at them. If it's a location outside of the ones I just named, um, you have to get a disc um, and you can send that to us directly. We'll download it into our system and then we'll, we'll send it back to you. I, I think I did that with Dr. Gutman before yep. she started to, uh, so you might even have it on in my file. I'm just saying the new MRI that you get. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay. Dennis, yeah, Dennis, have, Dennis, after, after we meet tonight, what I'll do is I'm going to email you a link. Um, oh, sure. And it'll be an appointment request. Just fill that out, and our appointment scheduling department will give you a call tomorrow um, to get that appointment scheduled with Dr. San Filippo. Excellent. Thank you so much. My Enjoyed pleasure. Your presentation. Was there anybody else tonight who had any questions? You guys are letting me off the hook easy tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Well, Dr. Sanfilippo, I want to thank you again for your time tonight. Thank you for everybody for joining us. Again, this has been recorded and it'll be up on the website by the end of the week or early next week. Thank you again. Thank you, doctor. Thank, thank you. you doctor. Thank you. This conference will now be 